Thank you for listening and welcome to the second episode of the Media Industry and Communications Podcast. I'm your host, John, where anything I say, you can bring it to question, comment, or if you want to bring something up, send me an email at outermindmedia at gmail.com. Just put in Mike MIC Podcast in the subject line so I know which show to answer the questions on. All right, let's go. We got a fully packed show today. So let's go ahead and get started with our stock prices. Netflix is at $104.04. That is down quite a bit from last week. At That was $116.58. CBS is at $45.88. Down from $46.99 from last week when I did the show. Disney. $93.90 down from 101.45 Viacom $39.89 down from $41.69 last week and let's see here Time Warner $69.65 down from $71.06 and Fox $26.17 down from $26.46 last week when I recorded the show. All right, so we've got quite a few, we got some stories to get into. We have quite a bit to get into, so this will definitely be a uh, jam packed show. The 88th Oscars are coming, and the nominees have been announced since last week when I did the show. And, well, diversity is an issue, again. (laughs) And so, all the major categories are almost white this time. Um, So far as the actors go, it's all white. So far as directing and best picture, it's almost white. Uh, Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu, The Revenant, and who won last year for best picture, Birdman, He's Mexican, so he's not exactly white. (laughs) Therefore, um, big ups to him um, giving minorities some representation or would he be considered a foreigner, but however you want to slice it, congratulations to him. I'll actually probably see The Revenant sometime this week. I haven't had a chance to quite see it yet. Now, in this all this drama... There has been a statement from Cheryl Boone Isaacs, the new president of the Academy, who was actually made president, I believe, last year when all when, you know, the whole thing with Selma went down. Is that she put out in a press release saying we need to do better. (laughs) And she's going about the process of changing it. But of course, process does something that calls that takes something called time. And time is something that a lot of people don't like in this society. You know, people talk about instant gratification. Well, here it is. Instant gratification at its finest. And if you give me just a moment, I will pull up what I'm pulling up what she said exactly when she released her statement. Here it is. I'd like to acknowledge the wonderful work of this year's nominees. While we celebrate the extraordinary achievements, I am both heartbroken and frustrated about the lack of inclusion. This is a difficult but important conversation and it's time for big changes. The Academy is taking dramatic steps to alter the makeup of its of our membership. In the coming days and weeks, we will conduct a review of our membership recruitment in order to bring about much needed diversity in our 2016 class and beyond. As many as you as are as many of you know, we have implemented change to, to diversify our membership in the last four years, she went on. But the change is not coming as fast as we would like. We need to do more, we need to do better and more and more quickly. This isn't unprecedented for the Academy. In this night in the sixties and seventies, it was about recruiting younger members to stay vital and relevant. In 2016, The mandate is inclusion in all of its facets, gender, race, ethnicity, and sexual orientation. We recognize the very real concerns of our community, and I so appreciate all of you who reached out to me in in our effort to move forward together. That was her statement. 
and really it's like I said again it's going to take time and people are upset um, because there was Creed there was Beast of No Nation there was Concussion um, on the table as well um, and I think that might be the only three that really set anyone off I think those are the main three now with Beast of No Nation there it may not be a racial thing it may be just a Netflix thing <laughs> because they put it in theaters and it's a Netflix movie so the Academy might be a little gun shy about opening Pandora's box with Netflix but if it, if it met the requirements and it was there, it was there. So it it's it's a tough one, especially with the Beast of No Nation. Now Concussion, I will say, was a was one of was a great movie that was greatly edited. I think Oscar Isaac for supporting actor uh, should have got a nomination. Personally, at least he was worthy of it. But being worthy and actually getting the nomination are two different things because you can't play defense with the Oscar race you just have to hope someone doesn't do better than you did by the end of the year and he did a great job as um, Nathan in Ex Machina <laughs> I love Ex Machina I will sing the praises of that movie till the cows come home Will Smith in Concussion I think he did a great perform. he had a great performance should have gotten in possibly um, you'd have to compare the other um, performances that are there but yeah he did a great job now let's look at the academy um, the majority of the voters are Caucasian male they're Caucasian male um, there's about 5,000 to 6,000 voters that's a lot of people <laughs> and there's a lot of movies that come out every year so like I said it's not really a thing of you know it's a lot of movies. It's a lot. And you got to know what you also got to know, kind of know what you're doing. And we'll get into that a little later. And you have to understand the Oscars and what they are. Because people are saying we need to start our own, we need to start our own. There's plenty of black film festivals around the world, around the country that happen every year. And the Oscars are no different. The Oscars are just, is just a grandiose film festival. You have a deadline, you have your entries, you have your technical specs that it has to meet. And that's it. That's it. You know, you have your screening you have your screening requirements as well, but the Oscars pretty much is nothing but nothing more than America's biggest film festival. That's what it is. And it's a competition as well, and festivals are competition because you want to place or you want to win. It's just it doesn't have a placing system. It just has like whether you win or you don't win. And you know, a lot of people are saying that you know, we need to show, you know, um, gratitude towards our own meaning, the black community. But at the same time, any filmmaker that's about the craft of filmmaking, any screenwriter that's about the craft of screenwriting, cinematography, um, visual effects, what else, any part of filmmaking, they want to go against the best. They want to get better if they are about the cr their particular craft. Even producers, I'd say even producers, I guess their thing would be saving money. <laughs> But, yeah, it would really, if you're about the craft of filmmaking and creating content, you want to go against the best, and that means going against everybody. So this thing about going to, your, doing your own and, you know, showing this on your, you know, uh, having your own Oscars or award shows or whatever is understandable to some degree. You want to, you know, within your own community, fine. But at the end of the day, you have to figure that if you really want to be the best or get better, you have to look at other people's work and examine yours critically from a craftsmanship perspective as opposed to more of a social conscious or activism type thing. That's why if I'm a filmmaker, I want to be part of the Oscars. Why? Because it involves so many films and it's so competitive that is something to work on when you want to work and better yourself at your craft you want to go against the best now there is an actual issue here this does now the actual issue it doesn't come from the oscars it's the casting system i've listened to different um different pundits on movies and they've talked about this and they've always said it's casting it starts with casting. The Oscars only vote on movies that they see that are eligible. So if they only go with that, then obviously there's more of a casting issue. The Oscars are not Hollywood. Hollywood 
is the industry. The Oscars is just kind of the, you know, recognition award show of the industry. People need to understand what's really going on. It's the casting. It's the, you know, it's the um, executives. And then there's also the issue of there's a lack of Oscar knowledge, as in knowledge of how to get a film into the Oscars. And I'm going to I have a PDF. I can't remember how many pages it is, but it's a PDF. I'll put the link into the show notes. Um, that way anyone can look at it. You can look at this. You can easily see what it takes and what it means to qualify for the Oscars. I believe you can do it as an independent filmmaker, which is great. And that go will go into uh, Calm Time Talk. We'll talk about that. And last but not least, before we go to our next story, let's talk about social media. Of course, there's Oscar So White 20, 2016 or just Oscar So White, whatever. And then there'll probably be some type of boycott given Spike Lee's recent comments and Jada Pinkett Smith's recent comments about let's boycott. Well, you know, if you want to boycott because it's Martin Luther King recognition. But here's the thing. When people are saying Oscar So White, and they're making these complaints. I have one overall arching question to this. Did you see every movie that was and was not nominated? And not every movie that came out within the year. But the ones that got the critical acclaim, that were very close, um, like a Creed or a Concussion or a... Um, uh, that third movie's escaping me right now. A Beast of No Nation... Have you seen those movies? You've seen those movies fine. Did you see Spotlight? Did you see The Revenant? Did you see Carol or Brooklyn or um, what is it? Um, The Big Short. Did you see all these movies and all in conjunction with seeing the other ones? If not, just stop with the Oscar so white. If you have seen them and you think that from a craftsmanship perspective, from the craft of visual storytelling, that this is the that the movies that were out were the better movies, then you have a gripe there. You do have a gripe, but if you haven't seen these movies, then why are you complaining? Yes, there's a problem. Yes, there's systemic racism in just about everything in this country, possibly the world. And yes, there needs to be more diversity. I get that. But you have to, so you don't sound stupid in your cry, in your, you know, in your pot, I don't say crying, but with everything going on, then you need to stay as informed as possible and use your brain. Just don't go off on a hashtag rant just because everyone else is doing it from an uninformed place. Do we want something? Do we want, would you prefer that minority and female directors, actors, and actresses be, um, you know, rewarded without their, without the merit, competitive merit? Is that what people are wanting now? I sincerely hope not. Because that can lead to a brain drain and mediocrity. And we all know what mediocrity can lead to. Look at the education system in America. But it's important that people remember a few things. There's a craft to this. This isn't just about what the movie's about. Even though the the Academy's not perfect themselves. But in that regard, because genre films generally don't get the love. The Academy is not perfect, but as someone who's as someone on social media, are you doing what you need to do to stay informed on these films? Did you see all five films, five to seven films that were nominated in conjunction with the films that were done or starred by minorities and can say that, okay, yeah, these are, these did get snubbed in comparison, not because of whose face is on there, but because of craft, because of the craft of visual and artistic story, visual storytelling through the medium of film. Okay, so let's get to our second story is about Netflix. Again, (laughs) gotta love Netflix. Netflix is always in the news. So let's talk subscriber numbers. There was a Houston style magazine article um, that kind of, explained a little bit of Netflix and how its stock prices, what it is and what is, what's to be expected. Now, Netflix, the article is saying that Netflix's uh, stock valuations based on subscribers as opposed to revenue. 
And that's an understandable thing, although you still want to have revenue, but it's it's a stock valuation. Stocks are not really indication of profit or anything. It's just market, so it's kind of a demand thing. <laughs> And then there's expected to be more than 80 million subscribers on Netflix because of the global rollout. And then, of course, as last week, I told you there are a few countries they're trying to work things out with. Of course, China is China is China. (laughs) And then there's potential. Then there's also I read subsequently in another article on Cinema Blend about potential long term revenue issues. And what where that is, is second chance monetization of the content and not just any content. Netflix is original content. If you look at a show like Law and Order SVU, Special Victims Unit, it's been on the air since 99. Wow. That show ha- is syndicated on it. What well, still airs um, on NBC. It is. There's marathons of it on USA Network, which is owned by NBC Universal. So it's kind of in-house um, licensing and in-house advertising dollars. Um, there's also there's another network called Clue that it was on, I think, a year or two ago. It might still be on there. Syndicated. And there's uh, out here. I know it's uh, at least it was on a channel called Cron 4. But I'm not sure if, what affiliate station that is because it's a local station out here in the Bay Area. But that brings in money because advertising dollars, syndication ratings, same, th- it's the same concept because people love that procedural show. So when people watch that stuff and they watch the marathons, that show, that particular con, the content of the show is making is you know is making money. There's also at the time that um, I remember a friend of mine, she posted a picture on Facebook a couple years ago of all the see her purchasing all the seasons up until that point of law and order SVU. Like she had on DVD and I think one was VHS. No, it was all DVD. It was all DVD. I mean, she bought on Amazon. See another way, but now DVD in Blu-ray is pretty much a dying business. Oh, almost hell. You might as well say it's a dead business. So the old there's no old broadcast model that Netflix the original content like a House of Cards or a Marco Polo or Orange is the New Black can go off of. That can be kind of a problem. I won't say it's a problem, but it is a potential issue coming down the road. Like, where do you recoup some of the money? Because Marco Polo was expensive to make. It was so expensive. Um, House of Cards, they've put so much money into that. Daredevil and Jessica Jones were done cheap, but still, that's money. <laughs> that's still money, but that's also a partnership with Marvel, so that's a little bit different. Oh, how could they do that? How could they get some second chance monetization from the original content? Syndicate? But where? You're Netflix. People are cord cutting left and right. What are you going to do? I mean, you're not going to put your stuff on Hulu. That would be That wouldn't be smart. Well, you know what? It might be because... Netflix doesn't plan to do anything live, so that might be an idea to do something on uh, Hulu. Do partnership with Hulu to put some of your content on there. But then again, that would take away a little bit probably from your subscriber base. So it really wouldn't be that smart of an idea. And like I said, cord cutting is growing. Physical media is now an afterthought. One thing that I think really could help, special features. Um, and, but you got to figure out the platform to put this on, but special features. It was always, I remember I got, um, the incredible Hulk from 2008 star Wars, the prequels. Yes, I know. I know. Um, the, some of the best put together behind the scenes stuff on DVD where you would put it. I don't know. Now these special features do cost money. Now, if Netflix wanted to potentially possibly either do this with YouTube or YouTube red some form of potentially added premium service, maybe an extra dollar a month or something that could add on and they can get behind the scenes of the original content. And that could do it. That might be, you know, find a price, a decent, a cheaper, a cheap price point, have these in the can because it's going to cost money to produce them and edit them and shoot them and everything else. So they may have to come 
with that idea. Now, there is a possible streaming service bubble, and I'm because everybody's cord cutting, but I don't think everybody's going to want their account information with everybody because Netflix is different from Hulu and Hulu is different from Amazon Prime and HBO Go is different from Showtime's new app that's coming or that's already out. I think even Fox is trying to do the same thing. And then, of course, there's the streaming sites like ABC and NBC and everything else. So, And the cable companies are trying to stay alive with offering streaming options. So it's really a tough market out there. And I'm there may be a bubble. There may be something that goes on. I'm not sure. But eventually this may turn into a, a streaming bubble. And then there's content of paying the talent, the cast and crew because the market goes down, the cost to, to pay the town and the cast and crew are going to go down as well. So it's going to be interesting to see where things land in the next probably two to three to five years. I would say, look, oh, the next 10 years, no, this may be a three to two to five year thing. Two to five years. All right. Our third story is Apple Music paid subscription service is now $9.99 a month and $14.99 with a six person family deal. Uh, this is like Pandora with, you know, you pay so you don't have advertising. Then you have another rev, then another revenue stream for Apple. Then there's also features and premium content. Like for instance, the beats one, which is a 24 hour live broadcasting. So you can listen to shows like, um, live broadcasting radio in New York, LA, and I believe even London. Uh, there's probably other cities in there that wasn't in the, uh, release the information. Curated playlists, recommendations are done by people and not an algorithm, which I'm having a tough time seeing, figuring out how that works unless you got a lot of man hours or their cash or stuff is just cached and people come in from nine to five and make their make their choices for them. And then last is connect. Connect is going to be a social networking feature with artists. So let's say, for instance, there's a performance uh, let's say Drake does a performance somewhere. He supplies maybe the, um, you know, some video of the performance or him about to go on stage or when he gets off stage or backstage or something. But that's another revenue stream for Apple. It's not iTunes because this is strictly music. It's a, do I think it's worth the value? I'm not much of a music guy. I'm a podcast guy. So that's up to the consumer and see how things go. But think Apple's wise to do this, to offer these features, and it's a good price point at $9.99. It's cheaper than an album. And hey, you want to continue to have convenience of media? You got to pay for it a little bit, which I can understand. But hey, main thing is get rid of the advertisement. You got to pay for it. <laughs> okay, this is the section called Quick Hits. Quick Hits is just a few quick stories. Um, and the first one is big screen gets bigger. So big screen um, holdings will now be is now subsidiaries like, you know, big screen entertainment. So now they're doing subsidiaries. So they're getting bigger by going smaller. So they have subsidi subsidiaries for film, TV, merchandise and investments. And the investment is into the ind media industry. There's going to be a partnership. They'll be partnering with Chinese companies, which is smart legendary entertainment <laughs> from last week which everyone's getting into the Chinese market which is smart and let's see second quick hit is NFL in Los Angeles the St. Louis Rams are now the LA Rams they're returning next year 2016 season new stadium will be built and I think it comes in 2019 so they'll be at the Coliseum and this is a big deal. Like, I don't expect too many sports stories, but this is Hollywood, a place where there's the most cameras in the world. <laughs> so they're, you're, you're going to expect a lot of cameras, a lot of different. Oh, you got a lot of cameras there. NFL meets Hollywood media capital, big brand content is king. This is a big deal. This is actually smart. And they got one team there. I doubt they'll get two. But we'll see how this goes again. <laughs> but they've got to make sure that they have kind of some star power on that team. Because, um, yeah, they got good players. Great players. Talented players. But, eh. but yeah, media market. Media capital, really. And 
man, it's all about that money. All about the licensing fees. And Deadpool, the Marvel film produced by Fox, is now banned in China. Why? Because of graphic violence, nudity, and language. It's interesting because there's no really true governing body like the MPAA that we have here in America um, to rate a movie. But they can make arbitrary decisions. And honestly, I think it's a money mistake because Deadpool is in high demand. The marketing has been spot on perfect. And now you're just going to cut it off at the knees because of content. Really? This is this is just a no, it's an easy win. It's money. But then again, it's China. They got enough money. So I guess certain standards, I guess China isn't all about money, which is interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> but I do think it's a money mistake. But at the same time, do they really need the money? They really need the money. Okay, it's time for Calm Time Talk. This is where we discuss some in the communication, the communication side and storytelling side. Now, with this, we are discussing the Oscars, as I did earlier in the show. And with that discussion, let's go ahead and talk about eligibility and workarounds. Now, as I said before, I'll put a link in the in the show notes of where you can f- read all about Oscar eligibility and everything. So I'm going to go a f- through a few points to get into the Oscars to be Oscar eligible and potentially win or get nominated. First thing you have to do is make the best movie you can. It's just make the movie that of a lifetime that transcends any and everything. You really have to make that movie. It's a very arduous task. It's a lot of work. You know that and not uh in our eye too is probably going to win a second best director or and or best picture this year, but he's very meticulous. The Revenant was hell. It was hell from all the stories. Natural lighting, inclement weather, very few times they could shoot because of, you know, the weather and the sunlight and lighting because they used a lot of natural lighting. There might have been some lights, I think, of like a campfire scene from what I heard, but on that, it's natural lighting. He's a very tough guy when it comes to directing. He's very meticulous and methodical. You have to be very, very prepared. Number two, meet the minimum requirements. And what I mean by requirements, technical requirements, aspect ratio and compression. And that goes, that'll be also be in the document that I'll put in the show notes. So you have, so they actually tell you what format to put these in. I mean, you may have to shovel out some money for camera, but hey, screening availability. Now, for screen availability, and mainly it says in the document Los Angeles, but I believe it might be also in New York or Chicago or something. But whatever those requirements are, you make sure you meet those requirements. Okay, now we're getting to the more interesting stuff of budgeting. Oh, the fun stuff. There are a lot of a lot of things. Of course, it takes money to make a movie, especially a movie of certain visual and auditory quality. So there are various micro budgeting resources you can find on YouTube or on the internet. You can find plenty of them on the internet, on YouTube. Just look them up. Just let type in micro budget filmmaking. I be, I can't remember the, any particular YouTube channels, but look up micro budget filmmaking. I think that'll be good. Also, let's see. Yeah, uh, micro budget filmmaking, filmmaking stuff. I think you can look online and Google. And then there's probably just other stuff you can use and look up, you know, various cameras and everything. Now, with a lower budget, if say you're an independent filmmaker, you so with a lower budget, you have to be more creative. You're just gonna have to be more creative with your storytelling. You have to kind of come keep things simple as an independent because you don't have the money unless you want to charge up a credit card. That way there's less to worry about. You can hone in and focus on the performance, the script, the editing everything else you can just keep it very tight i mean you can tell you can do a movie about one person stuck in a box there was a movie called buried starring ryan reynolds i have not been able to see it but i heard it was great and he was just in a car it was like he was in a box or a coffin for an entire movie but it was 
it was just him and I heard it was very compelling there was a movie Locke that Tom Hardy did he was I think he was just sitting in a car for two hours and you learned about his entire life so if you're creative enough and you can keep things simple you can come up with movies that will easily well not easily but you come up with movies that can work and that you can shoot and do a full length feature because I think the minimum runtime of that is like 40 minutes to an hour for a feature you, so you can go short That's a, well short in that regard but it'll be short crowdsource funding yay money 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 so crowdsource funding is a little different now if you're going to crowdsource fund you have to kind of crowdsource fund with certain expectations and certain things you want to keep in mind as you're putting together a budget as for the budget of the film to make the film and possibly pay your cast and crew and you might want to just go in under the thought process of I need to pay my cast and crew something add into the the amount that you're going to need to do this entire process the screening costs unless you've got to deal with a uh, with a certain theater that you can work out or you probably don't get paid anything whatever the tickets are just go ahead and factor that cost in to distribute the film yourself add more press screenings for academy to see and notice which means if let's say for instance the minimum time frame is seven days then you may want to add a few more days on that if you're going to screen in LA so that there's press screening so that way the buzz can get going because that's the part of the marketing part of the Oscars the Oscars is also a marketing part there's a formula to this there's marketing involved trust me they know trust me the reason people get Oscars it's a lot of marketing that's what happened with Selma Selma did not do the press screens it needed to do because it just said oh let's release it now with no press screenings and that was a big problem it might have gotten a best picture nomination or Ava DuVernay could have gotten something had she, had they done the proper the production done the proper marketing push for it that's why people do stuff late in the year the way it might be a little bit cheaper and they're not competing with big blockbusters in the middle of the year summertime and then let's see there's ad costs also to put these in certain festivals TIFF cons South by Southwest etc the bigger stuff because that can also get you one distribution number two it can get the buzz going about it and it can alleviate some of the costs if they pay if you get kind of a distribution deal out of it if you're wanting to have something get Oscar notice and you're an independent filmmaker go for it you have to be tight you have to be smart you have to be efficient you have to be frugal in certain areas but you really have to get creative not only in the filmmaking process but in the marketing and the business and here's something creative that I don't think a lot of people may think about if you're gonna have a casting crew um, from pre-production all the way to post-production and marketing hire people to do it however what you can do is give a mistake so you can sign yourself up as an LLC so it um, um, rent Raymond's film RaymondFilms.com or Raymond Films LLC or however the best way to incorporate yourself as a legal business then for the particular project you sign everybody to contracts where they get a certain percentage so let's say for instance your entire crew you have casting crew you have about 20 people so you as the owner of said company will take the high uh, the most out, out of everything but you give them a nice decent stake financially that way they have a stake in this maybe a little bit of extra motivation because money can motivate people despite what you think and then sign them to it be creative in how you can get people to put the best performances out there to the best work possible you know give them a stake give them the credit something especially when you're tight on cash you know, asking for favors is great, but to really get somebody that's really in there to do it, you may have to come up off some money or you can come up off some ownership because if you don't, if you don't have the money up front, like, Hey, if we really do this, we put forth this effort, we can really, really make some money. You can get noticed, blah, blah, blah. So when it comes to the marketing, pay someone to do the marketing, pay someone to do the editing, pay someone to do the camera work. If you're not the, if you know, if you're not going to do camera yourself, 
pay your actors, pay a screenwriter. If you can't pay them, give them points or give them a percentage of revenue from that particular project. Hell, who knows? Maybe just start, that could be the start of your own filmmaking company with all of you. And then you just keep your stuff, your percentages in place for every project. Who knows? But you have to get creative. Creativity is the biggest thing here when you're dealing with, you're not dealing with a whole lot of money. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. And so if you like this episode, please go ahead and like it. Either However you listen to it on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. Also, go to OuterMindMedia.com for all other content and written blogs. Now, send me emails at OuterMindMedia.gmail.com. I look forward to reading your emails, especially on this topic of the Oscars and diversity and getting into the Oscars or about anything else or anything you'd like for me to discuss on the show. Look forward to hearing from everybody. Follow me on the various social media networks at Outer Mind Media. Thank you everyone for listening and be entertained. Bye.